Mohim Amein, welcome everyone. Good to see you all. See you tonight again. After two or maybe more weeks. I was <laughs> out of town. Always good to come back. And welcome to the new attendant. Mohim Amein. Welcome. Mohim Amein, welcome. And Bezrat Hashem, tonight... I want to share with you something that's very, very important that can be beneficial to all of us, to our life, to our relationship, and in general to our emotion and everything that we feel about depending on that. And what is that? And of course, it's connecting to this week, parasha. And But the topic that I want to talk about it's what is exactly we see every single day around you. What does that mean? When you talk to people and people see things in front of them, there is a way that two people can look at the same event, the same picture, and each one of them have a different perspective. Yes or no? Right? Which means that whatever you see is not what you see. There is something behind it. So I want to talk about the something that behind it. How can we change our perspective that whatever we, whatever we see... Can I have a seat? Have a seat. How can we change our perspective of whatever we see around us in the world in our life, in our relationship, in our family, in our community, everything that's going on around us, we have, we can take it and look at it in a bad way or in a good way. And everything we can give it a different interpretation to the event, if it's good or bad. Everything is what we see or what we have behind it. And what we have behind it, right? So what cause a person, one person to see good, to see positive, to be all the time in a positive direction and positive attention, and what causes other people to be sad, depressed, negative, uh, angry, and everything that you think of, and they can change and feel and destroyed their life because of one thing that they look and not in the right way. The reason that I want to talk about it is because this week parasha. We see this week parasha that HaKadosh Baruch Hu send the spies to spy in the land of Israel. And Hashem asked them, Moshe Rabbeinu asked them, I send you to a special mission, 12 people. I want you to give me the report. If it's a wide, how much length, how much kilometers from side to side, what kind of nation, what type of army they have, what type of trees, and so many things that he asked them to see and to give him the report. Right? All the nation, what type of people exactly? You need to go like a spy. You know those spies who go to uh, Gaza? I don't know if it's a Gaza spies, but, but in Syria, in uh, Lebanon, in many, many other places that the army sent, to check what's going on. So also to give uh, the secrets where to attack, which, which way. And the spies went for how many days? For 40 days. And they came back and they said, there is a giant people over there. Everybody dying. There is a lot of funerals over there. Kula metim, shama eretz ochelet yoshvea. En ha'ama yoshev alea chazak. There is no way we can defeat this nation. It's a very horrible place. Do not go there. That's what they said. We are not recommend to anyone to step into the land of Israel. Hashem, Moshe Rabbeinu, and everybody start to cry. Everybody cry. 
ויעש כלב, there is only two people out of the twelve, כלב and כלב, and, this is your parsha, and כלב and יהושע. יהושע בנום, the only two people, they said, ignore those people. טובה הארץ מאוד מאוד. The land of Israel are very very good. Excuse me? Well, you, you were in the same direction? You were in the same place? How after 40 days they said something and they said something opposite? They didn't even say, you know what, it's not so bad. Maybe this. No, no, no. They said opposite. They said, they said, Tova Aretz Meod Meod, which means that it's a good, very good place. Not just good or something. Very good place. How come? And what is the message that the Torah want to teach us? On more than that, more than that, we saw that another report, more than that, why the Meraglim, the spies, they got the punishment. You know what the punishment they got? Atem bechitem bechiyah shel chinam. You guys cry for no reason, you're going to cry forever. In the same night was what? The night of Tisha B'Av. Because you cry for no reason, because of that, you're going to cry for so many years. What? Why are you punish? Another punishment, he said, every day that you spy and you, 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 Every day that you spy the land of Israel, 40 days, I'm going to let you stay in the desert for 40 years. Yom Lashana, Yom Lashana. And all of you, you're not going to be able to see the land of Israel. That's the punishment. That's the punishment? You took me and you told me to be what? The spy, to give you the report. It's like somebody sent you to the store of uh, jackets. And he asks you, go check the jackets, what type of uh, cotton jacket, what type of material, and tell me if it's good price, if it's a good material, if it's worth it to buy in this uh, manufacturer, in this place. You come and you tell me, this kind of jacket, it's good, the other one I not recommend, and this uh, polyester, the other one, don't touch it, it's very horrible uh, material. After that, I'm, gonna, I'm telling you, you fired. <laughs> Excuse me. But you fired. You tell me to give you the report. So why you punish me? Why Hashem punish those people, the spies? And we, we said every Shabbat night, 40 years before, and we said, Right? We said we got to be in the desert for 40 years, Moshe Rabbeinu did not went, make it to the land of Israel. And all of them die because of what? Because they give the wrong report. Because they give a negative report. That's, that, that, that's the mission. You ask me to give you the report. Well, why you punish me? Right? Not only that, we got the punishment forever to be in exile for 2,000 years and Beit HaMikdash, the first temple and the second temple, both of them destroyed in the same night. Right? Both of them. The Beit HaMikdash are shown the second and because of that we in exile for 2,000 years. What? Because of their report we supposed to suffer? How come? Atem Bechitem, you cry for no reason, you're gonna cry for forever. So, of course, we have to understand what exactly happened in this, the scene of the spy, the Cheta Meraglim. The Torah is not the book of stories that tells us that something that happened 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 years ago. It's something that we are dealing every single day, right? The Mekubalim said, let me tell you something according to Kabbalah. The Mekubalim said like that. The Mekubalim said there's two months in the year that the Satan hold and control on those months. 
Which month the Satan? Everybody knows what the Satan? Right? Uh, two months that the Satan controlling. Which month? This is by the hand of Esav, the Mekubalim said, Tammuz and Av. Tammuz is the name of worship idols. It, the, like the, they used to have a statue that called Tammuz. They used to worship him by giving him smoke. They used to give him like smoke and it looked like he cried, right? So Tammuz is the month that control your eyes. Av is also the controlling of the Satan, but Av is controlling of your ear. Right? This is one connected Reuven, Reuven, it's Tammuz, Shimon, it's a listening, it's Av. Okay? This is according to Kabbalah, I'm not getting into it. Every month it, 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 it's according different tribe. Right? So the Mekubalim said that the reason that the spies look bad because they went when? Night before Rosh Chodesh Tammuz, Kaftet Sivan. They went to, to be the spies. If you're going to count 30 days of what? Tammuz. And another 9 days of Av, all 40 days. So because they went to Shlichut in those months, that's why they have the controlling of the Satan on their eyes. That's what they look bad. That's what we have in those months, right? We have a lot of tests, especially for men outside with their eyes. It's very hard to keep your eyes, right? But there is another message that hidden over here that, that related to our life. What is exactly happened to the spies that were such a big leaders and they all fell in this mission that Moshe Rabbeinu pray for who? For Yoshua. He add him the letter of Sarai, the Yud, to his name. Instead of Hoshea, he add Yud. Ya Yeshuacha Me'atzat Meraglim. He give him the protection, he give him the prayer to pray because he knows there is no way to get out of it. Why there is no way to get out of it? And Kalev went to the cemetery of Kivrot Tzadikim in Hebron and he prayed by himself. They, because of that, they survived not to say the bad words of the land of Israel. Right? Because the Mkubalim said, if somebody said, if somebody said bad words about the land of Israel, the land of Israel, we kick him, they kick him out. That's what we all hear. I mean, not because of that, but we, whoever not appreciate, oh, it's such a bad place to live, it's such a stressful, such a bad people, oh, it's a horrible, okay, no problem, you're going to be outside. Right? So, but what is the message? Every person, whatever we see in our physical eyes, depending of a lot of things that are going on in our subconscious mind. Everything that you see in your relationship, everything that you see in other people, depending what's going on inside of you. If you vessel are clean, if you vessel your emotion, your mental, your spirit, everything, you have a lot of good inside of you. What do you see outside, the reflection? You're going to see good in other people. There is, a, there is a story about old couple who moved to a new building. In the neighborhood, they have building in front of a building, in front of a building, like in Panama. I just came back from Panama. It's all buildings in front of each other, right? There's no houses. So, those couple moved to this building and the guy used to go outside to drink his coffee in the balcony and he realized there is, there is a, a, a new couple, very young one, that she used to take the laundry and hang it outside. So the guy, he's 70 years old, he said to his wife, Hey, look at this young couple, young lady. She don't know how to make laundry. She said, why? Look, it's all dirty. She don't know how to, to squeeze it, how to clean it. Maybe the machine is not working. Another day, she, he came. You see, again, 
She don't know you must go and, and treat and, and help her and teach her how to make laundry. After a couple of days, his wife realized what's going on. There's, there's no way that this lady making the laundry over a week or two and everything, it's, 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 it's dirty. And then she realized there is a big window on the balcony <laughs> that the window is so dirty, full of mud, that's why that's what he sees. So she cleaned it up and then she, she asked him, what do you see right now? Oh, now she knows how to make laundry. She said, no, now you cleaned it up and now you see good. So when you see something outside of you, there's a lot of things that inside of you that reflect on this vision, right? When you have a good attention, you're working on yourself, the inner work, and you have love, you, you have the passion to help others, you love people, you have a benefit of doubts, not to think all the time negative. So what do you see? What do you see? Only good. When you focus about positive, you focus what do you have in your life, you focus about being grateful or be appreciated, what are you gonna see? Only good, right? You're gonna be appreciate all those people who came here today, right? But a person who have expectation, a person who focus on what's wrong in my life all the time, what I'm gonna see? Oh, that's, that's the only people who came? You serious? That's the pizza? Why? We used to have a, a, a Chinese, well, what is that? What is the sushi? Where is the, Nahon? He's always complaining. He's coming back home. What is mashed potato with, with hot dog? What, I'm a dog? What is that? Are you serious? What's going on in the house? Look, it's all balagan. It's all mess. Look how you look like. Man, you change your dress. Change your... your, your <laughs> all the time complaining. All the time criticize. All the time say things. You can be in the best community, best events. You have, can be, have the best friends, best rabbi. You all day long, what happened? Complaining. All day long, focusing what's wrong. Focusing on the negative. See bad things. Wrong? Why? Because you have a lot of things that you got inside of you. That because of that, it lets you to see only bad things. You can take the camera, you can focus on, 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 on one thing or whatever. You don't see what's going on around. Sometimes you can live in the same build, building, the same house, with a beautiful and amazing wife. But well, what do you see? Only bad things. You can have the best husbands. You're focusing what's wrong in, in, in him. You see all the time what's wrong. You always look for what's wrong. And that's make you frustrated. That's make you upset. That's make you angry. Right? Instead of what? Focus on the good things. Be grateful. Have some love and appreciation and have a benefit of that. Maybe your wife, she's tired. Maybe he didn't do enough. Maybe he's going through something. Everybody going through something. You have no idea. I'm talking to people and said, wow, I can't, I can't believe it. I, I thought you were okay. I thought you were everything good. But everybody going through something. But depends how you change your eyes. How you change your eyes can change everything. But not only that to change your eyes, how you look at others. How do you look about yourself? That's the most important. The Meraglim said something, one sentence that changed everything. The Meraglim said one sentence about the giant. What did they say? They said, we saw the giant in the land of Israel and we felt like a grasshopper by their eyes. How do you know that the Miraglim, the giant, look at them as a grasshopper. They, they, you know what the, 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 the giant wear? Which size? A hundred feet. How much is a hundred feet in meters? Come on, three meters? 25 meters? Very, very high. So the giant were over there, and the spies were over here, and they said, one of the reports, we felt like a grasshopper by their eyes. That's what they look at us. How do you know that? How do you know? Because whatever you think about yourself, that's 
the same thing people look at you. Whatever you look at yourself, if you have low self-esteem, whatever your husband is going to give you is not going to be enough. Whatever people will give you is not going to be enough. You don't care about me. You don't treat me nice. You don't da, 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 all day long. Right? Because you suffer from low self-esteem. So whatever you're going to give, you always look for, for approval, look for, for attention, much more words. If the husband or a person suffer from low self-esteem, so how are they going to treat him in, their, in, in his job, in his work? Same thing. So people said, people take advantage of me. People don't, people don't pay me enough. People disrespect me. No, 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 no. You disrespect yourself. <laughs> you don't think, you don't look at yourself that you value enough to have such a an, an disprice or whatever. You don't appreciate yourself. So how can you come to someone, uh, listen, I think that I need to uh, charge 30 or $50 per hour instead of 25. No, but if you look at yourself that you not value yourself like that, nobody will value it, right? So the same thing that you look at others, the same thing how you look at yourself. There's a story, a famous story, in somebody in Bnebuk. You know what's Bnebuk in Israel? Yeah. It's a religious... The place, it's like New York, but in religious people. Very, very small place, but everybody in, inside of each other. So somebody, Avrech, very poor, he just got married, he learned in the kollel, barely make a hundred shekel, a thousand shekel, it's three hundred dollar. He was Nebech, you know what's Nebech? I don't know if you speak Yiddish, but Nebech, Nebech. Yeah, yeah, Nebuch is like Misken. He used to go like that with very all the time dirty. His hat, he have a, uh, a brown hat instead of a, a, a black hat. Very old hat. And all the time he wants to buy a new hat. But he didn't have money. One time before Pesach he saw a poster. There is a 50% off uh, for Yeshiva boys. Before Pesach, whoever wants to buy a hat instead of the 600 shekel, 300 shekel. Mivza, okay. Mivza al kovaim. He went to the store. He went to the store. And before that, nobody said hello to him. Nobody paid attention. He was all the time. Uh, uh, Miska, you know those people. Like, like you don't want to be around him. Nebuch. <laughs> <laughs> so he went to the store he, he couldn't believe that he'd be able to, um, to buy after a few years for his bar mitzvah he went, he chose the hat he, 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 he find the same size he was so happy wow, now psh, now I can be like a chosan again like Hadan in Pesach to feel like Ben Chorin he was very excited, he swapped the card he didn't decline Swapped the card, he, he, he paid, and he said to the owner, can you put me the old hat in the box? And he went outside with the box. He went outside, somebody approached to him, hi, Rabbi Yankiv, how are you? Happy Passover, Hak He said, wow, <laughs> first time somebody said hello to me. He was walking like that, he crossed the street, somebody asked him, how do I go to this store, to this store? Another person said Chag Sameach. He went to, back to his neighborhood. Uh, one of his neighbors that never said hello to him said, Hi, how are you, Bianca? How is you, your family? How is everybody? Chag Sameach. He went home. His wife opened the door. Hi, Mashlom Cha, how are you? He said, Baruch Hashem, great. No? She said, what? No, you don't see anything... Uh, Anything new? She said, no. He said, what are you talking about? He said, yeah, I saw a box in your hand, but what's going on? He said, look at the mirror. And he went to the mirror, and he realized that he put by mistake the old hat on his head. But the new hat was here. <laughs> right? The new hat, he thought that the owner put the old hat in the box, and he wore the new hat, but it was exactly opposite. And then he realized 
than everything inside my head. Whatever I look at others, whatever you expect from others to respect you, to love you, to appreciate you. People said, people don't respect me. People don't answer me. People take advantage. People don't pay me. People da 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 da. No, it's not about the people. How you look at yourself? Do you know the value of yourself? You know how much you're worth? Your skills, your knowledge, your, your image? Even when you date someone, you go into Shiduchim. Everything is about the, the impression and the relationship that you build. But everything, it's, it's about your approach and your perspective. Can be the same person one year before Nebuch, when you do the. the right? Nebuch. Lemech. Oh, Nebuch, whatever. Whatever. You can be, but if you work on yourself and you're positive and you, 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 you do the real work, people will feel it. Yes or no? Right? You go one time to Tony Robbins' event, you change your life. Right? Why? You change your perspective. You change your image, you change your identity, you change who you are. You feel good about yourself. Everybody wants to be around you. Everybody wants to be partner with you. Everybody wants to, to, to learn with you, to be around this person that is successful, he's positive. But if you walk in in the, in the, in the morning, you wake, you wake up and you oh, what a bad day. Oh, it's all rainy, it's all disgusting, it's all humid. Oh, those people, Florida people, oof. <laughs> oof, look at my eyes and look at the house. It's stupid house. I can't believe that I steal this box. Oof. <laughs> right? You look at everything. You're not a pre you, you don't love yourself. You don't love how you, how you dress. How you, how you don't love your body. You have a lot of questions about yourself. You have low self-esteem. So... Whatever your husband is going to give you, he's in the 80% battery, you're in 30% battery. So, it's not going to work. In order to have uh, 100% or at least 80% of success of relationship or build, you, you, you need to come with a different approach. You have to look at yourself in a different way, right? That's what the Meraglim Hashem punished them. Hashem punished the Meraglim not because what they saw. Because what you saw, what you talk, it's what you have inside of you. You not appreciate yourself. You don't see the good things of yourself. That's why you don't see the good things in others. And because of that, you cause the destruction of Beit HaMiknash. We sit down on Tisha Be'av. Why we sit down on the floor? We cry about our potential that could have been better. And because of that, houses being destroyed, people getting divorced, people leaving their house, people losing money and losing their job, losing themselves, everybody's scratched. People go all day long to therapies, to, to coaches, to, 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 to give them a little bit of idea or feeling that they're something. Instead of looking at yourself and seeing what's the neshama that Hashem gave me, right? What kind of skills and knowledge and beauty, how much good things I have inside of me. So if you want your wife or your spouse or your friends to appreciate you, appreciate yourself first. But the meraglim or people that not look at themselves in the right way, right? So all the time to look for what's wrong because that's why this subconscious mind, the survival mode, uh, uh, is focusing all the time about what's wrong. So your husband and your friend and your parents and your community around you, they're not going to appreciate you. They're going to put you down. Your face say everything. Your energy, you can smile, but you feel dead inside. Right? You see people smile, but I'm sorry. But I saw someone, I, I went to Los Angeles, there's a lot of Pico Roberts on these, a lot of, um, uh, you know, Schnoller, uh, you know, people that come to me, they're asking for money, right? Beggars. Beggars? So much, like 15, 20, every fila, you can't even pray. <coughs> these 30 synagogues in the same, in the same, in the same street. Somebody came and he was asking for money. You know, how much you can give? I was there just for Michal Vito, but... But every shachrit, mincha, avit, they're coming. 
you're like, they make him, somebody told me that he make a thousand dollars a day, more than a lawyer, <laughs> and sleep in his car. But somebody came and he asked, can you help me, can you help me? And everybody give him a dollar, a few quarters and whatever. I give him also a dollar. And not, it was not a nebech, it was chvais nish mamash gamul It was very disgusting. Another person came a little bit, look uh, normal, look nice, and he was asking. People give him five dollar, ten dollar. I was amazed. Another person give him twenty. After thirty minutes, a rabbi came to ask money for his kolel in Israel or yeshiva or something. And uh, he said, whoever can help, whoever organization, whoever can help people, the same people that give him dollar, the same people, you give him a hundred, another person give 200, other people give 50, he make a $700 just for five, two minutes. And I was sitting on the side and I was, oh, and then what happened? The person, the person, and then what happened? The person that just got a dollar, he came again to the same person that gave a hundred, and said, can you give me another dollar? He said, no, I gave you already a dollar. I was, I was shocked, I came after Alano Shabbat, I asked him, his name is Amir, what, how, what, what, what's make you not to give him another dollar? Like he just gave a hundred, He's, he's a rich guy, not the rich, but he likes to give to that guy. Give a hundred, you give to this guy 20. This guy didn't want to give him another dollar. You know what he told me? This guy worth only a dollar. I'm not gonna give him more than that. I was shocked. Every person go around. A lot of people, each one of us, we're going around. And people have a secret language in our hearts. What people feel me? How can I appreciate myself even more? That people can appreciate even more. That my husband, my wife, my kids, my rabbi, my community people, everybody around me. Sometimes you feel like a dollar, that's what they're gonna treat you. Don't be expect from others to treat you better if you treat yourself like that. Because whatever you treat yourself, whatever you love yourself, whatever you appreciate yourself, that whatever you look at yourself, if you look at the mirror, you're not happy with Hashem, what, what, what Hashem give you. If you're not happy and dancing every single day, I'm the best, the world is existing because of me. And the world cannot be exist be, be without you, and without you, and without you. No one. And no one in the world will be like you. No one in the world in any thousand generation. And the world cannot exist a minute without you. If you woke up in the morning every single day with this positive and this energy and this perspective and you look at yourself, wow! Not with Gava. With Gava in a positive way, Hashem, wow! Wow, thank you God, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I can reach the top of the world, I can influence, I can do a lot of things, I can make so much money. Because the money that you're making today is not about how much you make and what kind of job you have and how much people pay you. It's how much you appreciate yourself. How much you're identity. How much your identity, how much this Moshe, David, Shlomo, Israel, Michal, whatever. How much this guy is worth for you? How much you want to invest, to appreciate, to... To, to give to this person. That's what the Meraglim Hashem said, you cry for no reason. You say bad things because you might, you were afraid to lose your job. The Zohar said the reason that the Meraglim said bad things about the land of Israel, because they want to stay in the desert. You know why? Because they don't want to lose their title, the president of the Shvatim. If we're going to be in Israel, everybody will take their house and there's no more president. Oh, we, they have kavod. Oh, you're chasing for kavod? Boom. You're not going to get anything. But the most important reason that Hashem want to teach him, if you're not appreciated today, you're going to cause the destruction of Beit HaMikdash. 
You're going to cause so much destruction in your, in your life. You're going to waste another 10 years, another 20 years that you could have been and make much more before. You could have had a better and triple job and income. You could have had a better and, 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 and 10 times a better wife, a different relationship, a better kids. Everything can be changed. But how you look at yourself, right? So the Baal Shem Tov says something very interesting. He said there is something that called we learn it in last week parasha. It's called En Abdullah. Who heard about the crystal eye? You heard about it? I need to do show about it. Crystal eye. Misha Shomat Avi Balashalom know what I'm talking about. So the crystal eye, the Torah said that the manna that everybody got in the desert. The, the parasha before this week parasha, the manna used to look like a crystal eye, and no Ken Abdullah, it was like like a, a eye, like a circle of a, let's say of a jelly or something like that. They used to have it in front of their house, whatever they, they eat, they were satisfied. And that's it. But this crystal eye, this manna, had a system that is dependent on your level of righteousness. The righteous people used to take it in front of their eyes, in front of their house. They wake up in the morning, oh, woke up, they eat breakfast, that's it. The people that not so righteous, 50-50, they used to go to the neighborhood of the Benoniim, the Right? The Aventura? Right? No, I'm sorry. But the people, <laughs> they can, <laughs> right? And they used to take the mana. But it was embarrassment. You can imagine a rabbi, they used to take the mana in front of the house for a month or two, and then he speaks the Shonara the night before, or he says something, or he does something, or he wake up and he eh, where's the mana? He's not here. He needs to go all the way there. He knock on the door. He needs to pick up the mana, he pick it up and he run back home, but he can't eat it because he needs to grind it. But the Hanuba Lechaim. Where am I going to find a grinder? I need to go to a plantation, right? To find a grinder. For those people, he used to grind. I'm sorry. Right? To, def uh, to, to plantation. So, <laughs> anyway, and there is another, the last level is the Rishayim, the bad people. They used to take it like very, very bad in, I don't know, in downtown somewhere. And they used to take it and they need to cook it and grind it and a very, very long time to process it. Am Israel was complaining about the manna. We don't want this bread. Why? Why you don't want this bread? You have whatever you think about any kind of taste about steak, about mushrooms, about ice cream, everything you have, except four things. Watermelon, onion, and um, kishuim, are you saying kishuim? Uh, zucchini, and, um, and garlic, you fell out. Only four was not on the menu. What did they complain? Oshe Rabbeinu, we don't like this kind of bread because we're missing this menu. We want to feel like we eat watermelon. Are you serious? You have all the menu in the restaurant. Why are you, why are you complaining? What's wrong with you? Right? They were insane. And then Akadosh Baruch will punish them and whatever happened. And, and uh, Moshe Rabbeinu got, got upset. He said, how can I provide food for these people? They don't appreciate it. They're always complaining. And, we talked about it last week. Um, but why, the Baal Shem Tov said, why the manna called crystal eye? And he said something beautiful. And take it with you. We talk about how we look at others and how we look at ourselves. Now the Baal Shem Tov flip everything. And he said there is something that called crystal eye. Whatever you see in others is whatever you have inside. Which means, you see someone that is going crazy, he's upset, he's cursing, he's blah, 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 blah
He said, how come this person is behaving like that? You judge him, you, you, you don't understand how, or you see someone going to a not kosher restaurant and you judge, you don't know, or, or you see someone that not keeping Shabbat. The Baal Shem Tov said, Baal Shem Tov said, you saw someone not keeping Shabbat, you also not keeping Shabbat. What? But I'm keeping Shabbat. How come? No, no, no. You also sometimes cut the tissue when nobody <coughs> sees. <laughs> you do a lot of things. You do borer, you sort in, you take in, you cook in, you put in the platter, even you know that it's not allowed. You... <laughs> Yeah, but you're taking a shower even, you know that you're not allowed, it's not supposed to take a shower in Shabbat. <laughs> right? You do a lot of things. That's why Hashem is showing you this guy that is not keeping Shabbat. You see someone talking in the tefillah. You see, or you see your husband doing one thing that bother you. I'm talking about something that really bother you. And you judge, oh, I can't believe it. I, I can't believe it. It's, it's, it's insane. Like, it's crazy. She's crazy, Rabbi. I'm telling you, my wife is crazy. I can deal with everybody in the world. I'm so happy and I have so many friends and I'm so social. But my, my wife, she's totally, she's psychic. She needs a therapy just for her. <laughs> no, no, no. Whatever she, whatever she's going through, whatever she behaving, you're the same thing. You saw someone that is not loyal, you're also not loyal. You saw someone doing bad things, you also do a bad thing. No, but I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not. You're doing something else that is similar to that. Otherwise, you wouldn't see it. It wouldn't be bothering you. Now, just to explain what I say right now, it's a class for four, five, six hours. If you want, you can do a series about it. It's amazing. More than that. You saw someone that treat you like a little dog. You know those bosses that scream at you? We have an experience that someone that is a boss, he's screaming, what are you doing? Why are you coming late? Why? Da, 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 da. All the time put you down, all the time scream at you, all the time. You know, I'm not mentioning any names, but... And you say, oh, I hate this guy. What, what, why is he behaving like that? Why is he treating me like that? Huh? <laughs> you don't understand. Whether it's your boss, whether it's your husband, whether it's, it's somebody that's crazy on the street. You want to change him? And you try to change him and he's not working. You tell him so many times, listen, it's the last time that you treat me like that. The last time you scream at me like that. I'm not tolerate this behavior. Understand? Thereafter, behave the same thing. And even he says sorry. Yom Kippur, Erev Yom Kippur, he said, I'm so sorry, I'm apologizing. Don't, don't forgive me. Mutzay Yom Kippur, four minutes after Yom Kippur is... <laughs> Unbelievable! So I had this experience. Uh, for three years, I was going crazy and I couldn't know. I didn't know what to do. Until I saw this Baal Shem Tov. And that freaked me out also. More. Because what? Whatever he does, I does. Whatever he behaves, whatever I look outside, it's inside of me. But I never treat anybody like that. I never scream like that. And then I sit with myself and I saw where is in my life I scream like that or I behave like that. And then I realized that there is one child in my family. I have six kids, Baruch Hashem. And so, so I used to scream at him before he go to sleep. He was a Balaganist a little bit. Go to sleep right now. It's the last time I'm telling you. If you're not going to go, I'm not going to give you blah, blah, blah. Listen, I'm... Even I promised to myself not to be like my father, but I found myself sometimes Moroccan, upset. <laughs> And I was like, and I, and I caught myself, wow, 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 wow. I can't believe that the same thing that happened outside, I have it in the same thing with someone that I love the most. And I didn't realize until I sighed outside. I committed myself, I'm never going to scream at my kids anymore. It was six years ago. I'm never going to scream at my kids. I'm never going to raise my voice. 
I mean, I do my best. <laughs> I'm an American. <laughs> I know why. As as I never gonna um gonna ask him very nicely and gently. Could you please go to sleep at eight thirty and shut down the iPad? And it's very working, right? <laughs> but one thing happened once I stop it and I change my perspective. This once I learn this message, I turn off something else outside. Because whatever you see outside, it's inside of you. Even the Mal Shem Tov said, if you see someone not keeping Shabbat, let's say, but you're keeping Shabbat, how come? No, no. So the Mal Shem Tov said, it could be. He said, You don't have to be exactly the same thing that you see outside, but some of it. Which means, he said, if you don't respect a rabbi, rabbi is like Shabbat, is like calmness. Talmidei Chachamim and B'chinat Shabbat. So the Baal Shem Tov said one time they saw someone driving on Shabbat. And they asked the Baal Shem Tov, how come that you saw it? Rabbi, you're not keeping Shabbat? That's what they confront the Baal Shem Tov. He said, no, because they disrespect another rabbi, a lot of rabbis fight with them because the has against the Hasidut. So he said, yalla, this rabbi, what is, uh, what is he talking about? He doesn't know what he's talking about. Because he disrespect the Talmud Chacham, that's why Hashem sent them someone that not keeping Shabbat. So it could be a similar. So before you judge your wife, before you judge your husband, before you judge people that treat you, or not behaving in the right, whatever you look outside, ask yourself, what is inside of me that I need to change? What is inside of me that I'm not loyal, that I'm not good enough, that I have the ego? You know those people, you need to work on your ego. No, 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 you need to work on your ego. Because it's bothering you, which means that you, you recognize that, right? So whatever you see outside, it's reflected on you. And that really can change everything. If you want to influence on someone, even about your kids. What do you think about your kids that is not listening to you? Right? Whatever, he filled it. He feels how much you appreciate him. He feels how much you respect him. So that's what the exactly happened in Am Israel, that the man I used to reflect him and give him the mirror. We don't want to be a mirror. We don't want to work in our stuff. We don't want that. It's not about the watermelon that he didn't want. It's not about the garlic or the onion. Right? Sometimes someone complains about something, but what he wants, something else. It's like your wife, she's complaining about something, but, and then you said, okay, so take a Tylenol. It's not about the Tylenol, it's not about the towel, it's not about the lunch, it's about something else. But we don't get it. So, the Meraglim, whatever they look outside, Hashem said, you have something inside that you need to work on. So that's why I punished you. That's why you're not deserving to be in Israel. That's why because of you, Moshe Rabbeinu is not gonna be in Israel. All of you, you're going to die here. And not only that, you're going to cause the destruction of Bet HaMikdash, the first and the second. And you're going to cry for your potential, for your life that you're wasting, for looking at bad things in others, looking at bad things in yourself. Hashem wants us to appreciate ourselves, appreciate what we have, to be grateful every moment, to say every single morning, I love myself. I am the son of God. I am the best. Right? All the world is existing for me. And I can do the, the world better. Right? Instead of walking in this space and like me scan all the time and, 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 and all the time to, to, to complain and see what's wrong and what I mean. This one is not good. This one, this one, this one. Die, God. Die. Die enough. What is the last time you come with the good news, with positive attention, positive approach to, to, to the people around you? People want to hear only positive. You have something negative, you have to do uh, something bad. Talk to Hashem. Do it for the dude. Right? Because why don't tell people what you're going through and, 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 and your problems? Why? Half of the people don't care. And the other 50%, they're happy that you have it. <laughs> so, 
Sometimes, sometimes I'll tell people when you're going to talk to Hashem, he's, he's the only one who can listen to you. So, Be'ezrat Hashem, the Parashat Shlach is the message for all of us. To see and to, to see only good around us. And believe me, if you change your eye, if you change your eye, everything will come. Ein come before pay. For whatever you see, that's where you're going to talk. Whatever you see good, you're going to talk good. And then you're going to see good. That's why Ein before potech et yedecha. Enecho lelecha yisaber uvata noten lam tochla mito potech et yedecha. You want to see more parnasa? Say only good things, positive. All the time, see good things. See about yourself. Yes, I can make more. See yourself making double and triple your income. See yourself much more value. Appreciate yourself. Yes, I worth it. My hourly uh, rate is much more. It's double and triple what people. And you see people, yeah, you sign up. Yeah, for sure, 75 for you. Yeah, 100. 300, yes, per hour. Yes, why not? Each one of you. 500 per hour, why not? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Believe me. In fact, I coach you, you can get there. But slowly, slowly. <laughs> if we're going to do it, Hashem will promise us, Be'ezrat Hashem, the promised land, the blessing, Parnasa, the Shlombayin, everything will come to us, Be'ezrat Hashem, Amen ve Amen. Thank you again all for coming. Thank you for Asika Besa for sponsoring. Whoever wants to sponsor the next class, let me know. Whoever wants to join the WhatsApp group, also I can add you to the group and bring your friends and family next week. Be'ezrat Hashem, I'll see you all. Thank you again all for coming. Thank you.